Hello there, balsamic friends. It's Picha Neri here, and today I am going to talk to you about how I am planning to build user journeys and experiences for the, the visitors to the new website for the Galleria Nazionale dell'Umbria, a wonderful museum in central Italy. This that you're seeing is the old website. One of the problems with this website is, was that it's not dynamic at all. So it doesn't reflect the nature of the museum, which is not stuffy. It's the opposite of it. There's always lots of events and it's incredibly dynamic. So what we want is to create a website that is useful and that also creates and disseminates culture, which is part of the mission of the, the museum. But that also I am so keen to create a really engaging experience for the users, something that really takes you by the hand and is as useful as it is informational. I am going to try and explain to you what I mean by this, because as far as I can tell, I have not found yet any museum that is doing what we have in mind. And let's have a look. I'll give you an example. One of them is a Peggy Guggenheim collection in Venice. It's a very beautiful museum website. And if you go on the homepage, it offers you something to do, meaning that there's an upcoming exhibition that they want you to check out. So you're invited to find out more. But once you do that, all you get is a description of the exhibition, which is no doubt useful, but it's not particularly an engaging experience. The Rieks Museum website even, it does offer an incredible experience when you go and look at how they treat the entries in the collection, but it doesn't offer any specific experience on the site. It's worth actually reminding ourselves very quickly of uh, the user personas for the site. Now, we build user personas so that we can identify the people who come and visit our site. And usually when you get it right, more or less, then you'll find that you serve one persona and you're actually serving many of them. Obviously, we have six. We can't address the needs of each one at the same time. But when I'm thinking of these experiences that I want to build, we will build some that will be useful for everyone, some that will be specifically targeted at one of the personas, and we will create different opportunities for them. For instance, for our persona, which is a university researcher with a specialization, so he's a, let's say, a power user, we could build a journey through the collection that addresses his need specifically, and maybe we will do it from a post, or we will create a landing page that we direct the traffic to from maybe one of the places that the specific persona visits regularly. But as we get started, the museum has been closed for a long time because during the pandemic, they started a major refurbishing and rehang. So people will go back there and if they're tourists, they will remember how to get there. So I'm keen to build the first journey helping people to get them and also something else that we want to do is we want to place the museum within the fabric of the city for instance our persona annika she's a tourist so i want for this to be the first experience that we build because we're going to link it with the second one which will be how much time have you got to visit the gallery or to visit the town and according to uh, the answer, then we can build different suggestions for the user. I'll show you a really engaging experience that I love and that uh, will probably give you a better idea of what I'm trying to do. Maybe you know Duolingo, it's a language learning software, and I love the way that they take you by the hand and get you to learn a language in a really engaging way without even asking for your email address. So let's say that I want to learn Hindi. Why am I learning a language? Brain training, always good. Continue, daily goal, regular, 10 minutes a day, why not? Want us to help you keep your daily goal. So here's where I have the option to give them my information if I want to, but they haven't asked yet. So 
I don't know, any Hindi stuff from scratch. Oh. Here we are. I'm already learning. This is the kind of experience that I want to create for the user. Obviously, how do we translate this to a museum? How am I going to do that with Balsamic? Well, one thing that I love to build is user flows. But specifically in this case, this is an example. This is a really good article that shows you how to do it. But however, I will build something like this for uh, this specific experience. And it's important that I do it also because I'm working with people who've never done this kind of thing before. I am building this with the museum staff because they are the ones who know. Now, I am going to show you what I've got here. So I'm doing the organize uh, your trip, how to get to the gallery. And this is, by the way, we have a UX writer who is going to tweak the content. She will be uh, with us when we do the builds, but she is working on it already. How to uh, use the best language that fits with all the other content work that she's been uh, doing on uh, the website. So first question is, how are you getting here? Now I'm using ovals for the questions and rectangles for the answers in mapping out this journey. So we've got two options. It's public transport or uh, independent transport car. Let's say car because it's the most normal thing. And the question is going to be train or bus. Now it may be that we change this and we ask not from the north or from the south, from a big city or a small city, this may change. Uh, now I'm going to go back to the car. I'm going to say, okay, car. So um, I would, I think here it's a good idea to ask where from. So I'm going to copy this. Where from? And here you can give them a few action, a few options. So A, uh, let's say north or we could even give them uh, a few city names this is something that we will i'm sure refine north south i just you know just to give you an idea north south center the idea is to be really helpful so that the end result will be links to maps but also links to uh, parking spaces, for instance. But I really want to take people by the hand in a way that's as quick and easy as the duolingo example, and that ends up in something that's truly useful for them. At that point, you can ask them, would you like us to send this to you um, or, or not? So that people, if they want, you, they give you their email address, but they don't have to. The idea with how much time have you got is very uh, similar. So let's say that they have uh, a few choices. Actually, I can simply use a button. I can. Um, so how much time have you got? Let's say one day, one hour, three hours. So with this information, you can build a similar type of journey. So let's say that they've got uh, one day. Then in this case, what the first que question that you can ask is, do you prefer painting or architecture? And people could answer in a variety of ways. They could say architecture. They could say painting, or you could say both. So painting or architecture architecture painting or both and you can easily see how we can branch out further here for instance with the architecture journey we can then start giving them a series of uh, suggestions on what to do both within and without the museum but it's really easy to see how with this you can build a really engaging journey that will inform and entertain and it will end up the idea is to end up on a page that collects all the information and that they can again get sent uh, to their email address or simply print out or take a screenshot of so i hope that i gave you an idea of what i'm trying to do and i have to say that to me this is one of the most useful uses for me of, of uh, uh, wireframes of balsamic I love building wire flows like this. I love the way that I 
can visualize what I have in mind and that I can show others what I have in mind. Uh, we are very excited about building this and I can't wait to see you the final result. Thank you so much. <laughs>